on PM Express tonight, the fundamental question I want to ask is what really happened on Friday? How on earth did the NDC MPs, as we've been now been led to believe by party stalwarts, how did they betray their party? They've been called treacherous, traitors, and betraying their own political party. Disloyal. It's just a host of adjectives have been used to describe some NDC members of parliament who voted to approve President Akufo Addo's ministerial nominees. And so today, we'll try and understand what really happened from some of those who were actually there and also voted in the House. And as you may have noticed, these are the numbers. This is what it came down to. It came down to numbers. As of Friday evening, we knew that the NPP side had 136 in the House and the NDC side also had 136 in the House because there were three absentees, one of which is on the side of the NPP, uh, two of them on the side of the NPP and one on the side of the NDC. The one on the side of the NDC, uh, James Achikwesi, by virtue of you know legal issues, could not be in the House. But there was Sarah Adrasa, that's another conversation for another day, who wasn't in the House. And then there was one other uh, Deputy Minister, I believe, who wasn't well. And so we knew as of Friday that it was going to come down to 136, 136. And if you go according to Constitution, and people voted strictly according to party lines, then that vote would have been defeated when there's a tie. So that is the case um, as we went into the vote, and so there were 200 and 72 MPs, right? And however, the end, why is this an issue? This has only become an issue because of the build-up towards the vote. You remember on the same show, we had an exclusive with the General Secretary who told us emphatically that he was confident that the NDC MPs will vote in their numbers, all 136 of them, to reject the President's nominees. He was very, and I, I made a point to him, that be careful with what you say, because we've seen this before when uh, Kojo Pong Krumah, Hawa Kum Singh and Ken Ofriata were held up and yet they got a vote. There was a party grassroots vote that says, well, this time is different. We are going to monitor, we're going to place in monitoring mechanisms to ensure that they comply. And if they don't, there will be sanctions. And then we went to the vote and this was the outcome. Significant numbers of NDC MPs voted with their MPP colleagues to approve the nominations of these six nominees in clear violation of party whipping them in line. There was a three-line whip that had been issued, and three-line whips come with consequences. And that's another conversation we need to have. If you, if you violate the three-line whip, it comes with consequences. In fact, it could, it could come down to possibly even being expelled from the party. But the challenge with this is it's a secret ballot. You need to find those who were disloyal to the party. And if you look at the numbers, you, the, the least you will find is, and that we've heard already some of the NDC MPs themselves doing their own calculations, claiming that some 36 NDC MPs voted with the other side. And you, you see that play out here. So Katie Hammond had 154 people voting. And you look at the number here of people who said, no, it's 116 short from 136. That's what it's supposed to be. And Brian Champon obviously swept the day in terms of the numbers. He had far more um, NDC MPs voting for him. The numbers reduced significantly from what he used to be when it came to KT Hammond at 116, even for Obi of 120, or even in the case of Stephen Amor of 123, all the way to 98 of them. 98, so if it came down to it, there were 98 NDC MPs who stood firm, possibly throughout, in the voting. But the others, close to 40 of them, decided to vote with the other side. That has led to, but the thing that surprised me, yes, rejected votes. MPs, MPs, and you know what the voting was? A simple case of just taking a pen and then ticking a box, six boxes, you tick the box, and somehow, Three of them, in the case of Brian Champon, managed to spoil their ballot, right? That in itself is another conversation we need to have. So those are the numbers. And then you come to 
and, and for me, this is the big deal, right? They lost in the ministerial vote. And then a couple of hours down the line, they had an opportunity to redeem themselves in the case of the judges. To be fair, to be fair though, in the judges' case, there hadn't been an explicit um, order. But the party's principle of operation safer democracy applied here too, which is don't blow the government. You don't need more people to the Supreme Court. And so we've approved two already. These two, we are opposed. And the reason why this was an interesting matter for the very first time, the Supreme Court nominees who have been vetted and report laid, they were held up. Their nomination, the nom confirmation was held up for months. But why Friday? And if you listen to what happened on the floor, the MPP side was, they were insisting that we will vote on these two, on these uh, judges on Friday as well. When the MP, NDC side, after having laws, were begging, I want to go and come back on Monday too. Then these MP, MP, MPP sides are no will vote. What was it? What was it that convinced them that if they voted on Friday evening, they will get all of them approved? And lo and behold, that's what happened. The numbers were closer though, but there were still at least, in this case, were two NDC MPs who voted for them. In this case, there were three NDC MPs who voted for them. So who are these individuals? There's a search tonight for them. And if you go to um, what we've seen, the reactions have been, have, been, have been crazy across the board. And this is the directive. The directive was clear. Size of government must reduce in the face of economic crisis. If you don't reduce your size, we are not approving your nominees, is what the NDC uh, said there. Now, this I find interesting. The general secretary of the party, Fifi Kwiti, on his WhatsApp page, has been putting out the names of NDC MPs, he says, were kept faith with the party, the loyal ones. So this is a roll call, he has been naming them, a roll call of loyal NDC MPs. So he it was naming and praising, not naming and shaming, but naming and praising those who stood with them. The question is, how did he know these MPs? Because this was a secret ballot. But tell you what, we've seen um, videos already circulating of some of the NDC MPs. They are recording of their secret ballot and sharing it with people. And that has leaked already. Uh, we've seen a few. So maybe that's how he got to know. Maybe when he told me here that he'll put in place mechanisms, that is what he meant. And so they know. So what this means is if your name has so far not been published by the General Secretary of the NDC, and we've put their pictures there for you to see, uh, Wisdom, Woyome, Tete Botui, and there's Henry Nogbe, Edward Bawa, Yusuf Suleimana, uh, Rikis Hagan, uh, Gamado, uh, Charles Agbeve, and, and, and there, there, there are more of them. I, I want to, you know, not, not all, uh, James Kluja, Veji, uh, Agboja, uh, Andrew Kuwete, you know, Zanato Rawlings, uh, Amako Fibua, Roxy Nelson, Dafia Mepo, who has been arguing on, on Twitter that he's, they're, they're, he's part of the uh, 90 plus MPs who stood with the party and with the country and in terms of the population. He's also there named according to the general secretary. We, we didn't make this up. He put this up on his WhatsApp page to, to name them and praise them for keeping uh, and being loyal to the party. Um, do, those are the names. Of course, you have Okwidi Tua Blackwa, you have the uh, man himself who is a minority leader, uh, Mr. Atufosim, Dr. Atufosim, named as one of those loyal to the party. You have Butala Mohammed, uh, you have, um, you know, Bernard Ahiafo, uh, Peter Yaakwami Aka. You know, these are the faces, I mean, Mauno Bejra. These are the faces, these are the, the roll call, the loyal NDC MP roll call. That's what they are, those who stood with the party and the NDC will tell you with the majority of the population who wanted a reduction in the size of government in the midst of the economic crisis. And the, the pictures are, are here for you to see. More of the pictures there. Uh, Peter Tobu, Agnes Naumumu, Clement Apak, John Kwabena, uh, Kofi Adams, uh, Linda Ohene, uh, Abenewa, uh, Betty Mensah, Elizabeth Ufusu, Ajari. Very interesting. I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating indeed to see what is happening uh, within, the, within the NDC. And then the names continue. Francis Xavier Sosu, Thomas Nyako Ampim, Besma Tete Nyako, uh, you know, Fuseni Ibiye Fuseni, Konfudoyo Ganza, uh, Ibrahim Ahmed Banda, uh, Joycelyn Tete, 
uh, Helen Ajoa and Toso. I mean, these are the MPs the General Secretary says voted and stood with the party. They were not traitors. They didn't betray the party. They kept faith with it. And so they are being praised there. Now, the thing though, and I want to go back uh, a second just to make a point here. That the thing about the faces I've shown you, it is implied that if your name is not part of this list, then you are not loyal to the party. Yes, right? It is implied that if your name isn't part of the list I've just shown you, the names that the general secretary had put out, if your name is not part of the loyal NDC MP roll call, so far, it is implied that you chose to betray the interests of the party. That's the implication here, right? And that is an interesting point, actually. And people are watching his, his WhatsApp page to see the names he's dropping. As he confirms, he puts them there. And we just collated them from his, from his WhatsApp page. And he's updating them. So maybe he hasn't seen the evidence yet of other people. And so he hasn't put them up yet. But we are keeping an eye on this. It's been, this happened on Friday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday evening, close-up day passed. Three days in, he's put this there. Is that it? We can count. And then let's see who is out. And then people will start pointing fingers. Why is your name not in this roll call? But here's the thing, though, I need to point out. This is not the first time it's happened to the NDC. In this hung parliament, with all the power they wield. Remember the case of Mevisawa Kumsin, Kojo Ponkruma, and Uusu Friyakoto. When they were, again, held, their, their nominations were held. And people thought they were going to reject it. It came down to a vote. Massive defeat again for the NDC in the House. This time, there was a massive revolt at the grassroots against the old leadership in Parliament, to the point where Sami Jinfi took on the minority leader. It's never happened before. Publicly, writing the statement, with, you know, strongly worded the statement, criticizing them. Suggestions of all manner of foul play are on their side. That was then. This is now. Same story, different leaders, same outcome. So here we are. Atto Forcing, obviously, had said a bit about this. He's profoundly disappointed, is what he said. But he wants them to look forward. He wants them to look ahead. John Mahama himself has spoken also on this matter. He says, the people betrayed us. They're traitors, but we will not victimize them. We look ahead, they, you know, um, going forward on this matter. We have, of course, the General Secretary himself also feels very betrayed by this uh, matter. And then, of course, the MPP has been speaking. Why not? This is a victory for them in the house. When we return from the break, I'm going to be speaking to two people who were in the house. What really happened? I want the inside story. Please stay with me.